Hello there! This is the first video in the series on notes to installing an Apollo Solar Geyser. Today, we'll be looking at the integrated high pressure system, specifically the anti siphon loop part of the installation. So, why does a geyser need an anti siphon loop? Well, when a geyser is installed without an anti-siphon loop and the main water supply is cut off, hot water is sucked out of the geyser through the cold water inlet and siphoning occurs, causing the geyser to drain itself. Think of the scenario when you siphon a liquid out of a container with a hose. As soon as you get the siphon process going, you lower the hose for the liquid to siphon out. As soon as the external water level is equal or above the water level of the container, the siphon process stops automatically. Hence, when a plumber installs an anti-siphon loop on the geyser above the cold water inlet, the hot water inside the geyser cannot drain out through the cold water inlet pipe, as it is impossible for water to naturally flow upwards and above the water level inside of the cylinder. The vacuum breaker is at the topmost part of the loop to function as the open end of the hose, thus preventing the siphon process from occurring. How does a vacuum breaker function? There are two vacuum breakers installed on a geyser installation, one on the hot water outlet and the other on the cold water inlet side. The vacuum breakers are installed 300 millimeters above the anti-siphon loop and assists the function of the anti-siphon loop by opening a spring-loaded seal once a negative pressure is sensed inside due to the water siphoning in the wrong direction. The vacuum breaker will open up letting air into the system, thus breaking the negative pressure which in turn stops the siphoning process from occurring and prevents hot water coming out of the cold water tap. The other function of the vacuum breaker is to prevent a vacuum from forming inside the geyser which could lead to the cylinder collapsing or warping when it is rapidly cooled. The barrel begins this demonstration at 0 psig. The barrel in this example will be filled with steam while open to atmosphere. Once the air is purged and the barrel reaches 200 degrees Fahrenheit, we will pull the steam source and seal the barrel. Once the barrel is sealed and a condensing load is applied to the barrel, the steam inside condenses and the pressure falls. Ultimately, the pressure inside of the barrel is low enough, relative to the atmospheric pressure outside, that the barrel collapses. The barrel begins this demonstration at 0 psig. The barrel in this example will be filled with steam while open to atmosphere. Once the air is purged and the barrel reaches 200 degrees Fahrenheit, we will pull the steam source and seal the barrel. Once the barrel is sealed and a condensing load is applied to the barrel, the steam inside condenses and the pressure falls. This barrel has a 3 quarter inch vacuum breaker installed in the smaller bung opening. Once the vacuum inside of the barrel reaches one inch of mercury, the vacuum breaker opens, allowing air to replace the collapsing steam, and thus preventing the barrel from collapsing. Note that the vacuum breaker can be supplied with internal threads to run a line to a safe place, protecting the vacuum breaker from contamination and guiding any drips that may occur during venting to a safe place. 